Okay, hello, hi, this is Rani Ahmed with you, and welcome to my channel Super Linux. And here we are uh, showing a catalog of all telescope accessories. And what you see is my uh, picture uh, on the left and the uh, right is my picture uh, with the same table, okay, uh, from two different uh, 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 sides, okay, you're seeing the same things. And those are all uh, the exercises that I have. Uh, up to like uh, two months ago okay uh, and there are uh, still some some things which have uh, which are on the way right now and they will finalize everything about uh, telescopes okay there are some things which I'm not gonna buy because it's uh, it's it's enough like uh, what I bought is enough and it just makes a good uh, telescope uh, observatory okay now let's move to the next slide Okay, so this is a guide to help you know uh, in abstract all accessories used uh, with a telescope. Okay, now fundamental information here: uh, what is a, uh, a telescope focal length? What's the focal ratio? And what's the mag magnification power of a telescope? Okay. Now the focal length uh, is the distance f between the convex lens, or uh, and the I mean sorry. Is the distance of f between the convex lens and the focus point f here if i have a lens okay uh, or uh, the distance between a concave mirror and the focus point so here in this uh, slide we're seeing uh, the uh, convex lens trying to burn uh, a paper okay at the point where uh, the light converges and uh, uh, like starts bearing the paper uh, is the, the focal point okay is the focus okay now here's another uh, one with the concave mirror okay and uh, look at the light path if you have two parallel uh, rays okay they will from infinity okay, coming from infinity like the sun compared to the uh, like the, the infinity here is like the distance uh, like comparing two distances you're saying like uh, here the length of a focal length uh, of, uh, yeah uh, the fo you have the focal length here which is like you're talking something in meters compared to something in kilometers okay when you talk about the uh, Sun uh, how far it is from the uh, mirror okay or the uh, convex lens okay so uh, the focus is point, the point uh, is the point where a piece of paper gets burnt by the sun uh, rays passing through the lens or reflected by the mirror at midday. A telescope can be built either uh, 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 on uh, uh, like by using a convex lens or by using a mirror. Okay, the uh, longer the focal length of the lens or the focal length of the mirror, okay, the more magnification power you will get. Okay, uh, instead of saying focal length uh, of lens or mirror, we just directly say the focal length of a telescope. So you don't think whether it's uh, whether the telescope is built on uh, a mirror or a lens. Okay. Now we have those m math formulas. Okay. Uh, there's the uh, we we use like let's go to the next uh, slide and just to understand what an eyepiece is. This is the eyepiece. Okay. This is the eyepiece. This is where you put your eye. That's we call it the eyepiece. Okay, the piece uh, of lens where you put your eye on. Okay, and see uh, through it uh, what the telescope is uh, trying to magnify for you and, uh, and make it nearer to you. Okay, and zoom it to you. Uh, so, uh, so as long as it's a normal lens, it has a focal length, of course. So. Uh, uh, we have the value of the uh, focal length of the telescope. You measure it. Okay, it's usually written on the telescope that you buy. Uh, also, you get the eyepiece uh, uh, focal length. Okay, and this way you will get the magnification power. How much? Uh, uh, how many times the uh, picture has been uh, enlarged and uh, made bigger to you and nearer to you? okay uh, inside the telescope so it is like uh, you find the focal length of the telescope divided by the uh, eyepiece focal length okay 
Now, uh, uh, like uh, naturally or like how things are uh, in life, okay, there, there are limits. So uh, the shortest eyepiece uh, focal length uh, that you can use to get, uh, like in a way that you still can get something obvious, something can be seen, okay, is the four millimeter eyepiece, okay. Uh, you cannot, uh, like if you go uh, shorter, things will be blurry and you cannot understand what's going on, okay. So this is the maximum zoom when you use, uh, for whatever the telescope is, your maximum uh, magnification is when you use an eyepiece with four millimeters. This is why just try and error. nobody is, uh, has no mathematical rule for it. It's just uh, how things are in life, okay. Uh, and uh, here we have the D, the primary mirror diameter or the primary lens diameter, okay. So this, the lens that sits here, okay, uh, in a telescope uh, or maybe later let's go or that one that sits here in the uh, in the back of the telescope based on, on a concave mirror okay uh, has a diameter of course so uh, you measure its diameter and you have to use the uh, millimeters uh, unit length uh, uh, yeah uh, the units of lengths uh, the millimeters not the centi uh, or the meters, uh, because you uh, will be using eyepieces whose focal lengths uh, are shorter than four centimeters. Okay, I know I'm talking about, uh, or I'm using the the four centimeters now with the eyepieces, but just understand because they are very short, and it's better that you uh, use uh, in your calculation integers, not like whole numbers. Okay, not uh, fractional numbers. Okay, that's why uh, we use millimeters, and it's more accurate in our calculation, okay? And it's easier for us to calculate that way. So that's why we use the millimeters. So uh, the diameter uh, here uh, of the mirror, not the tube, okay? Not the whole tube outside diameter of the tube. No, it's the outside diameter of the uh, mirror, okay? Now, uh, so uh, this is uh, the FR here, the focal ratio, or how strong is the accumulation of light, and how fast we collect the light in telescope. Now, this is a ratio. So the result uh, of dividing the focal length over the diameter of the uh, uh, primary lens or primary mirror, okay, goes something like uh, below five, like five, uh, four, three. Uh, to not one, one you cannot find it. Okay, market doesn't give you something like that. Uh, you will be uh, having a better telescope to take pictures of deep sky objects, something like nebulae and uh, galaxies and uh, uh, star clusters like uh, uh, Pleiades. Okay. Uh, and the shorter the eyepiece, because you're dividing and over the eyepiece focal length. So the shorter the eyepiece focal length, the stronger the uh, zoom power uh, will be or the magnification power will be, okay? And you'll get the thing more, uh, you'll be zoomed more, okay? You yourself will feel that you traveled nearer to the thing that you wanna see, okay? Now, the, we're talking now the designs of the uh, different telescopes. Now we said the telescope can be built uh, either on uh, one of the two ways, okay, a mirror or uh, a lens. Now the refractor is the lens uh, type, okay. So you have like two, you have like uh, two separate parties, let uh, you say, facing uh, uh, facing each other, okay. So you have here the uh, refractor versus the uh, reflector, okay. Uh, and we don't use the word reflector because it's hard uh, to uh, sometimes when you listen to somebody who's like talking to you it's very hard to you uh, for you to uh, comprehend what he has just said okay okay because the refractor and reflector so it will be hard for you to uh, convey them uh, uh, the meaning okay so with a uh, uh, here we have the refractor and we call it refracting okay uh, because the, the light gets through the uh, inside the telescope over here, 
okay reaching to the bottom and you just have to use the style just to move the eyepiece backward and forward and this triangle part triangular box part uh, is a prism this is the one that uh, it redirects the light that was uh, up, uh, upside like this okay follow my uh, mouse uh, movement okay uh, so and uh, this telescope you'll find it in every uh, telescope uh, it's a uh, like a small telescope uh, because uh, it's a small and uh, weak in zoom compared to the one that you installed it, uh, uh, compared to the big one I mean here okay uh, it will help you in, in like seeing many things okay so many things compared to what your main telescope is going to show you and uh, this way you can select whatever you want to select from the sky okay now next thing is that the uh, uh, this scope which we call the guide scope should be seeing the same thing the very same if you selected one thing the same thing should be seen in both telescopes okay but of course on the big telescope you'll see it uh, bigger and uh, with a stronger uh, magnification okay and this uh, part here, the green part over here, okay, or pistachio color part, uh, this one is called uh, dovetail, okay, this is the part where you uh, uh, put it on the mount of your telescope, on the tripod of your telescope, okay, uh, just to hold it, uh, you know, uh, to make it sit on something high. And this little part here, okay, there's a little screw over here, this is where, for example, you want to install your maybe a laser beamer just to act the same thing or laser pointer okay uh, to help you in aiming a telescope or even um, uh, put something like uh, your camera or whatever it is okay maybe you put your uh, telephone with its uh, uh, sky uh, map uh, application okay or program now this is the light path uh, this is how uh, the light works in the uh, refractor telescope okay so uh, just follow the arrows and they have to be uh, like we're, ta we're taking usually the easy kind uh, of uh, uh, of rays which are the parallel rays we when we have two parallel rays they go uh, like uh, a parallel to the axis of the lens Okay, so they will get focused and they're coming from infinity of course because they're parallel so it will be getting focused over here so you will be inside the uh, refractor telescope moving the IPs as we said backward and forward just to uh, focus the uh, uh, the image okay just to get the clear obvious uh, image okay now uh, here we move to the other part okay uh, the uh, reflectors the ones based on mirrors okay uh, that's what we call, call them ref reflectors so uh, we have the uh, first the Newtonian and uh, this is the default uh, uh, reflector telescope okay this is the first one you would think of okay uh, and this is the uh, like the simplest design okay? uh, of reflector telescopes and uh, there is a second mirror going over here let's show you the light path so you understand so and this is the Dobsonian same thing okay uh, it's weaker compared to the Newtonian uh, and the Newtonian of course is uh, named after the uh, famous uh, physicist and uh, mathematician uh, Isaac Newton okay Isaac Newton Dobsonian is named after someone uh, American called John Dobson okay uh, and like he was uh, he made this kind of telescope uh, in uh, the 60s okay uh, and if you want you can find videos of him uh, why now he's uh, he passed away okay but uh, there are videos of him okay uh, and as you see it moves like a cannon okay left and right and up and down okay and in all directions is left and right okay the holes it can turn the whole circle okay and make uh, complete circles okay uh, so this is the light path okay so here in the middle there is a flat mirror 
which is a secondary mirror, and the primary mirror, the objective mirror, which is the one that faces the object. Okay, and uh, we put this uh, mirror because you can't sit, uh, stand uh, or sit uh, in front of the uh, primary mirror, or else you will be blocking the light and blocking at the same time the image that you want to see. So that's why we have to redirect the uh, the light towards some way, either to the side here, or maybe later we're gonna see as we're gonna see to the back one, to the back side of the telescope. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> so that's why we are forced to do this. So here in the uh, in the Newtonian telescope, okay, and the Dobsonian is a Newtonian, but it's the way the uh, it's set, uh, it's sitting on our, how it's mounted, and uh, the. Uh, uh, and the Dobsonian, as we said, it has a uh, bigger, uh, bigger mirror diameter, okay, more aperture, okay, but a smaller and weaker uh, zoom, which is like smaller uh, focal length of the telescope, okay. So here, the, as we said, the light passes uh, or goes through inside towards the bottom, as in the uh, diagram here, goes reflected back to the uh, cross over here, uh, which holds its, which holds the uh, flat lens, secondary mirror, and we call this cross this uh, telescope sky spider because it looks like uh, 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 the secondary mirror is uh, sitting on a spider web. Okay, uh, and also uh, the light goes back into this part. Okay, which we call it the. Uh, uh, focuser, the whole part here, and this is where you put uh, insert the this hole where you insert the eyepiece uh, is called the eyepiece shaft. Okay, and the whole type of this uh, focuser is called this kind of focusers is called a uh, uh, it's called Crayford uh, uh, focuser. Okay, uh, the way it works, it does not have some kind of ear. Uh, some kind of gear, like tooth gear, tooth gear, uh, just by works by uh, uh, the friction between two uh, two pipes, the or two cylinders. This one where it has a dial, which you turn it just to make the shaft go outside and gets inside the tube. Uh, and once you find the, the clear, obvious image, uh, you will uh, use this screw, little screw over here. Uh, and just to hold the uh, 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 the IP uh, shaft uh, from falling it was inside. Okay. Okay. So this is another uh, view of the light path. This is good because it contains also the. Uh, the shape of the telescope tube, and you will be, of course, like what like what we said, the focuser here. Okay, uh, we will be moving the eyepiece up and down. Okay. Now the next one uh, is the schmidt cassegrain uh, telescope. It's a reflector too, as you see, and in this design, the uh, the eyepiece uh, does not move. Okay, at all. Even though we have here uh, a prism, like we said, it's just to direct. Uh, redirect the light just to be uh, able to see the image uh, like not uh, by squatting you will be uh, sitting uh, like you will be uh, like uh, kneeling okay uh, so uh, this is the uh, here this black uh, uh, like black area here is a glass okay clear glass it's just uh, now black here because of the shades okay, inside the telescope uh, of the shadows. Anyway, uh, it's just a normal piece of glass, but it just helps in uh, removing the aberrations and uh, uh, making the uh, image much clearer. And the secondary mirror is sitting here in this uh, little small uh, uh, circle inside the uh, tube. Okay. Uh, this another one is a kind of another kind of aiming uh, called red dot uh, uh, finder scope. Okay, which I hate it. Okay, it's just best for uh, not for stars. Yeah, it's best for uh, planets. Okay, 
uh, if you want to aim really use a laser laser is like uh, makes things piece of cake okay now this is the light part inside the Schmidt uh, Grand, as we call it a uh, city in, in short and what you move is not the IPs as we said you move the whole uh, plates of the primary mirror okay it's functioned inside it has a big hole inside it to allow the light pass through behind the uh, 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 behind the big uh, primary mirror okay and as you see it's uh, because uh, the light uh, moves uh, like a, like the letter Z as you see or the W here uh, compared to the Newtonian which moves more like a letter L let's go back to the design see it's a thing things move like a letter L if you pass there's a letter L over here okay okay so of course there's a Z here but it's not a complete W okay it's not a complete W like in this uh, city okay so more like a little L okay uh, I mean a, a capital L letter okay see just because uh, you want to see things like uh, from the side, not from the back side. Uh, so uh, this means that the Newtonian uh, telescope will be always, always, always longer than the uh, schmidt cassegrain uh, telescope. Uh, this is uh, industrially uh, makes the schmidt cassegrain uh, uh, much efficient in the costs of building a telescope. Okay. Uh, now, what's the good thing about mirrors uh, compared to uh, lenses, okay, is that uh, mirrors can give you a wider aperture, okay, and uh, bigger zoom, okay, which you can't achieve uh, with uh, lenses uh, when you want to go like something maybe with a focal length over uh, a meter and a half, something like that, okay, you cannot go that far, okay. With, a, with an SCT, um, like for example, the telescope called uh, Me from uh, the company called Mead, they have a type called uh, LX 216 inch. This can this has a focal length of uh, four meters. So you're talking about a ma a maximum magnification power uh, around uh, 1,000 times. So this can't be achieved with. Uh, you know, you got the idea. Uh, with uh, uh, with uh, refractor uh, telescopes, okay, because you can't make such uh, a convex lens. Okay, that's why such wide convex lens. Okay, now next we have the Rasa telescope uh, design. Uh, it's a reflector, but uh, but it's called more like an astrograph. This one is used only to uh, to take pictures, and it has uh, uh, like uh, focal ratios of uh, that equal uh, that's equal to two, which is uh, like a very uh, fast telescope, fast in uh, collecting the uh, light. And this is best for uh, doing uh, astrophotography of uh, deep sky objects, like we said. Uh, nubili and uh, galaxies and uh, clusters uh, why because uh, such deep sky objects are, have faint light uh, so collecting them collecting their light will take time so when we install a DSLR camera like Nikon or Canon cameras which has their lenses can be uninstalled uh, you you put them on manual mode okay those cameras and you make the camera shutter okay or the uh, like you say there's a, some kind some kind of a curtain that hides the uh, sensor which collects the light and to form the image and save it inside the uh, computer or the cameras okay and save it on the uh, sd card of the camera or the memory card of the camera uh, that curtain or that shutter okay you can make it open okay for a very long time as much as you want maybe it's eight hours or something like that and keep it running okay just to be able to collect the light so once you have a better uh, focal ratio that re like goes down to two okay as we said five towers two uh, so uh, as uh, like when the focal ratio goes smaller in number 
okay you'll have a better uh, image okay for uh, nobody now regarding planets and uh, you know like Saturn and uh, the rest okay it's not necessary okay use whatever camera you like okay so this is when uh, where the focal ratio matters so that's why we get something like this telescope and this is the light path uh, inside the uh, Rasa now I do not understand completely okay I don't understand what what's the purpose of the things that are on the front okay but just understand some kind of a uh, schmidt cassegrain uh, telescope okay now we have here a Maxatov uh, cassegrain telescope uh, And this is a kind of uh, military design uh, or mi military standard uh, uh, telescope. Uh, it's made by, uh, by a Russian fellow called um, uh, Maxatov. Okay. And uh, he used the same uh, uh, standards of Cassegrain and made that telescope. Okay. Uh, and here's the uh, light path, and this is what they use here the spherical collector lens. There is another lens here. Okay, it's a lens. Okay. <coughs> uh, and this spherical corrector lens, uh, here he has a mirror over here, but here uh, there's uh, the uh, this uh, glass here in the front, the covering glass of the tube is a lens actually. Okay. Now, uh, now because uh, the moving the telescope from one place to another can shake the mirrors inside the telescope, especially inside the Newtonian, okay, uh, this makes a, a blurry, unclear, beautiful image, okay. Uh, it's not a, it's not a clear, uh, obvious image. Sometimes they, uh, you see, for example, the star, uh, like. Uh, uh, elongated, not looking very much like a circle. Okay, very near to a circle. Uh, you see it. Uh, you see sometimes uh, Saturn's uh, like uh, uh, it has uh, like you see Saturn as two Saturns. Okay, uh, like almost coinciding, but they're not really coinciding. Okay, which are which with, with each other. Okay. Uh, at the same point, okay. So that's why we need collimation, and we use something like this. And the collimation works in a way that you put this. Uh, this is a laser beamer, okay. That you want the laser uh, beam to be reflected backwards towards this bullseye, and the uh, uh, the laser light uh, when it falls it uh, on the surface it makes a, uh, a red dot, because this is a red laser beamer. Uh, so you want to make the mirrors and move them uh, in a way there are screws over here like those one two three and there are screws from the back also of the, for the primary mirror you have to uh, do it in a way that they uh, move the screws and play with them in a way uh, that the light has to get back inside this bullseye and you have to move the uh, play also uh, and manipulate the screws uh, in a way that the red dot has to fall uh, at this red uh, spot okay once it reaches that it's uh, everything's fine and what uh, while you're doing it you have to make sure that the light does not escape the telescope it has to be to go like the letter L uh, from the uh, laser collimator here from the laser beamer uh, towards the primary uh, secondary lens over here at the one two three go back here in the middle okay you see you should see the red dot in the middle Okay, it should not be reflecting and make, make the, or the primary mirror should not be inclined in a way that uh, makes the light, once it reaches its center, does not go uh, outside. You put just uh, your hand in front of the telescope and find, what, or, or just a big paper, okay, and see whether there is a light uh, or the red dot has escaped. It did not, it did not go uh, back from, this, from the middle of the primary mirror towards the secondary mirror and because of that uh, secondary mirror it will be uh, uh, reflecting the light backwards towards the laser collimator so it can reach uh, the bullseye then you play with the uh, 
uh, scores, you know, like like I told you, just to make the red dot reach the uh, red spot here. Okay. This is another one, which is more expensive, like five times expensive. But why? It's the it's because of the way you install the uh, the laser collimator here. Uh, this uh, rough uh, part, okay. Uh, like you turn it, you, uh, you squeeze it and turn it. Uh, so it like uh, it pushes uh, itself uh, just to hold itself inside the shaft. Okay, so here, here he's putting the laser collimator, but this type uh, it uses a screw. Okay, the screw of the uh, eyepiece shaft. Okay, just to hold it. Okay, uh, which might make some kind of little bit of uh, shift okay that's why we use this okay that's why we use this and uh, it will uh, like as if it's like a balloon that uh, touches all the sides of the uh, eyepiece shaft from inside okay so it will be uh, like uh, equally uh, uh, like touching all the sides of the shaft okay and uh, this way, the uh, laser collimator will be 100% uh, inclined. Uh, sorry, uh, going straight with the uh, uh, eyepiece shaft. Okay. And uh, the piece here is just for if you want to install it on a, a two-inch uh, eyepiece shaft. Okay. The eyepiece shaft can be two-inch or uh, 1.25 inch or 0 0.9, uh, 0.965 inch. Okay. Now, 0 0.69 inch, uh, uh, 965, sorry, sorry, 965, 0 0.965, which is almost an inch, okay? Uh, the one inch uh, shaft is now all standard and don't buy it, okay? And we'll see some eyepieces based on that, okay? Now, uh, if you have a schmidt ground also, it might need uh, collimation, but its collimation is very hard. Uh, and. Uh, Uh, you will have to play with the screws over here. See, there are three screws over here. Okay. Uh, now, when you buy your telescope, uh, it does not come with those screws. You will have to buy them separately. Okay. Or else you will be using an L key uh, uh, screwdriver uh, just to play with them. Okay. It will be very hard. This one will make, uh, if you buy what you call Bob's knobs, okay, it will do one for you for placing them. Okay. So this uh, uh, collimator, there's a collimator, is made dedicatedly for, or dedicated to schmidt uh, Grands, uh, and it's made by Hotak. Okay, uh, you can find it on Amazon. It's very expensive, like for for five hundred dollars. Okay. Uh, <coughs> So uh, those bobs knobs here in the front is what you play with. Okay, it will be easier for you to uh, like play with a telescope. And by the way, this here, uh, the silver rod over here is the one that you use to uh, move the uh, primary mirror. Okay, just to focus your uh, image. Okay. And this is the light path of the laser. Okay inside the uh, uh, telescope okay and uh, uh, look the, the image here is inverted uh, by like intentionally because I wanted to make the uh, both pictures uh, show the same uh, direction of light path okay Okay, so when you do a schmidt grand collimation, you should uh, do do it in a way that you should reach this one. Okay, once you get it like this, okay, uh, and you have to direct it towards a bright star, uh, very bright star, uh, something like Sirius, uh, Sirius, uh, maybe Vega, something like that. Uh, you should find the star uh, be like that. Okay, uh, before it gets uh, like focused. Okay. Uh, once you see things uh, that are surface co concentric, okay, uh, and similar to the uh, uh, 
one at the bottom middle okay of this uh, matrix of pictures okay um, then you are uh, focused and well done uh, picture okay <coughs> now this one eyepiece runchy uh, eyepiece uh, is just to test your optics now if you uh, just install it uh, like any eyepiece and you look inside it uh, you should uh, after making collimation just to make sure that everything is over correctly uh, you have to uh, see your picture uh, in the run sheet with this perfect uh, optics uh, paragraph okay those ones the first, very first uh, row of uh, bar draw, uh, circles okay this is the perfect optics now the rest uh, uh, are imperfect or maybe for example when you have your uh, uh, primary mirror is spherical uh, you must uh, get it something uh, like this okay okay so this is an eyepiece just to test your opt uh, your uh, optics okay uh, this is a continuation uh, of the manual of the Ranchi eyepiece. Okay, you can find it online. Okay, just type Ranchi uh, eyepiece uh, manual. Okay, as a PDF and read it. Okay, and when you buy it, you will get this paper with it, of course. Uh, now, uh, here we're talking now about the methods of uh, mounting a telescope uh, on, uh, on a tripod. Uh, there is a German equatorial mount, uh, can move in all directions about when you uh, want to set it up okay like prepare it uh, you have to configure it in this way you have to make sure that uh, like by turning this uh, screw and uh, you will be making this uh, axis uh, go incline up and down okay but you have to put it uh, put the angle okay with the horizontal okay uh, equals to the uh, uh, equals to your uh, current latitude okay like you I look at your GPS see how much it is and uh, fix it as such okay there is a pro protractor uh, like uh, accompanying this uh, uh, mount okay which will tell you uh, the angle that uh, this inclination uh, is at okay or at what incline uh, what's the degree of inclination that you are at okay and you have to uh, di direct this axis towards the uh, towards polars okay once you do that everything will be fine okay now remember that also uh, that you have to make uh, this uh, here uh, where it says horizontal okay you have also to play with the uh, with the stand the legs of the stand uh, are movable and has some screws just to hold the uh, movable uh, legs okay which can go uh, uh, like uh, in and out uh, the uh, tubes of the legs okay inside the tripod so you have to make your be uh, best uh, to make it uh, go uh, uh, like horizontal with the ground okay that's the best thing you do okay before installing the uh, telescope okay and you can use uh, for example your uh, phone there's uh, there are some uh, applications that uh, shows you uh, when you uh, leave the phone on top of uh, the tripod okay it tell you whether things are uh, really uh, balanced with the ground okay horizontal with the ground okay? uh, now uh, what is okay and those count those weights are counterweights because for example uh, the uh, a telescope here tube has a weight and with, when it falls towards you when you're standing just beside uh, like in front of it like uh, like it's sitting now anyway you understand you'll understand that uh, you will have to balance it okay that's why you will have to use those uh, counterweights and they can move uh, along the road okay because of those screws you can uh, uh, loose them and uh, hold them with the screws and this uh, mount over here has a controller this one uh, has a 
uh, as a motor, okay, what you call a go-to system. Uh, some uh, some companies call it go-to system, which will help you uh, in tracking the star and keeping the uh, star or the object that you want to observe uh, centered inside the telescope. Centered, it means that the uh, uh, that if you, for example, grab the star, you put it inside here, the middle of the telescope tube. And can you also be used also with uh, refractive telescopes too, okay? Uh, okay, so you'll have to uh, also, as you said, uh, you have to direct the uh, inclination uh, axis, okay, towards the star called uh, Polaris, okay? Then you can start doing it. Now, uh, this uh, scope is used uh, with uh, some tripods, uh, which are German equatorial mount two. So it helps you in aligning the scope with uh, star Polaris. It's needed in telescopes having star tracking motors, which uh, are also installed on equatorial mounts. Okay, so it's just a scope. Okay, just to find Polaris. Okay. Now, uh, alt azimuth uh, telescopes, okay, as we said, they look like a cannon. They move like a cannon uh, in all directions and up and down. Okay. Uh, alt azimuth is, is easier, but when you have a, a go to system, uh, you have to use two stars instead of only Polaris. Well, Polaris is always apparent. So that's the good thing about uh, German equatorial mount. Okay, here uh, you'll have to have to know two stars at uh, very bright stars uh, just to start tracking. Okay, uh, when you want to set up the telescope. Okay, so you start with uh, two two bright stars uh, uh, at winter. You know them and memorize them, and find another two stars, bright stars, and memorize them in summer okay because uh, summer sky is different uh, uh, to or different from the uh, uh, winter sky okay but of course uh, at all uh, days you will always see polaris okay so use polaris and something else okay sometimes you can give them uh, only just a single star and it works just fine okay now methods of taking a picture from uh, telescope using a DSLR camera. And what we see here, uh, the Canon here is a DSLR camera because this uh, lens can be removed, uh, uninstalled. Okay, uh, and DSLR is short for uh, uh, Digital Single Lens Reflex Camera. Okay, DSLR camera. These cameras have little uh, mirror behind uh, the, cam uh, the camera lens. This one here. This is in the diagram. Okay, and here I have the sensor which collects the uh, image. Okay, and writes it down to the uh, SD card to the memory card. Okay, now the reflex here is uh, that the mirror can be reflexed upwards, so we can open uh, what we call the shutter. Okay, and uh, this way uh, uh, you will allow the light to go towards the sensor and to collect the image that you want to do it and write it down to the memory card. Uh, now, uh, when the mirror is down, okay, it will reflect the light towards you, not towards the uh, memory card. Okay, so that's why we have this uh, optical system. Okay, uh, which is like from the lens towards the mirror towards the uh, pentaprism, okay. Uh, the pentaprism, a good thing about it is just like can act like a mirror, so okay, but uh, with some kind of a uh, light uh, redirection towards you, okay. So you see the light goes like here, goes up here with a refraction, uh, in total internal refraction, uh, reflection, sorry, sorry, with a total internal reflection, you find the light goes like this, and this is where you put your eye, okay. So you put your eye here in the, in the back, okay, and of course, there's a uh, little display, LCD display that shows you what you're seeing, of course, at the same time. Okay. So uh, the way you uninstall the cam uh, the lens is by uh, pressing this button and the Nikon or pressing this button and the Canon 
and you click here just to get, take a picture at the Nikon and here to take a picture for using the Canon and uh, uh, as we said uh, we uh, use something called uh, long exposure uh, uh, but this works by setting the cam either camera doesn't matter okay they have both this system uh, uh, setting the camera to manual mode and then uh, you uh, open uh, the shutter so this will make the uh, mirror always going up okay uh, and you will have to use the LCD okay to see uh, what you want okay and you open it as much as you want in order to collect the light okay and uh, this is how we uh, install it on a telescope now this way this method is leading uh, the image directly from the uh, eyepiece here okay and now when you uninstall the uh, camera lens this one or this one doesn't matter okay when you uninstall it the lens itself is acting like a telescope okay uh, is it, it is a telescope by the way a small telescope now here in this uh, uh, slide you are seeing is that he's uh, reading the image from an eyepiece now in astrophotography usually what you do is not reading from an eyepiece you would use it like this tube and install it directly without the eyepiece okay we we'll see an image later okay uh, and this is what we call the T adapter this is the one for 1.25 inch and this is the T ring okay you install them as you see by screwing them and this is another one for two inch as you see okay and this is uh, that we have adapters we go on there to see them uh, which can convert from uh, uh, 1.2 inch to, uh, to 2 inch okay and uh, now we move to uh, eyepieces and uh, uh, color filters I'm gonna see later the uh, final results of usage okay so here's a whole uh, system suitcase kit containing eyepieces and color filters the color filters are just pieces of glass uh, which uh, like uh, display uh, which makes the uh, image uh, give you only the color that you are uh, that you added uh, underneath the uh, eyepiece we'll see how they uh, will install it and uh, uh, we have in the same uh, suitcase uh, like those eyepieces with different uh, uh, focal lengths now we have a special uh, eyepiece which we call the Barlow this is a multiplier uh, this will make the telescope uh, stronger for example by two times there's another one 1.5 times but now it's scarce you can't find it there's another one uh, uh, three times and, and uh, another one five times okay uh, now what's the benefit of the Barlow the Barlow will uh, help you in uh, like uh, for example in Newtonians sometimes the uh, you add uh, uh, accessories uh, which will, will not focus when you add them alone without the Barlow okay once you put a Barlow it will get focused okay so that's why you need a, fo uh, a Barlow because there's a shift the eyepiece do not sit as usual uh, without the piece that you added the accessory that you added okay so when you still add the eyepiece on the uh, on the part this is color filters okay this is a two inch uh, style okay or the size of two inch okay and there's uh, i'm pointing here uh, that this is a bar this is not a normal lens okay so we have just three lenses okay and there are also two inch uh, filters uh, like uh, we were talking about uh, uh, the barlow okay and i uh, see here how i'm standing Okay. we'll come back to the bottle because I want to use something just to explain why you should use a bottle okay uh, so here uh, there is the, uh, the prism okay this is the prism over here okay this is how uh, we install it okay and uh, I this is why we use it to uh, redirect the, the light see how I'm standing okay and we have three uh, telescopes we have here the bigger the biggest telescope, strongest telescope you would find in the market in the magnification power 
uh, the Alex 200, 600, uh, I mean 16 inch, okay, 16 inch telescope. The, the uh, 16 inches is just the diameter of the mirror. Okay, here I have the Astro Aster 130 EQ, it's a uh, 5 inch, 5.5 uh, uh, inch tele uh, telescope. And we have the uh, Mead Alex 200 uh, 8 inch. Okay, both are the same system, those big ones. Okay, but it's just a different uh, type of uh, tube used. Okay, and this is where my uh, most beloved uh, astronomy teacher, Adnan Tayyar. Okay. Now, this is for example, I'm adding uh, like, uh, the, uh, like if I want to uh, know what the camera is seeing, um, because the LCD will sometimes cannot show you exactly what, uh, yeah, like you cannot see, ex understand and comprehend what's uh, the LCD of the camera, uh, of the DSLR camera it's, uh, it's giving you. Uh, so um, that's why we use this uh, flip uh, mirror uh, device. Okay, it's just an ins inside it, there's a mirror which is attached to this dial, okay, which will open the light path. Here, consider this, there's a light path going from this side towards this side. Okay, here, this is the side of camera. This is where you uh, consider this whole thing as if it's a single eyepiece with a uh, camera. And this here is the side where you can see by your eye, okay, using your eye, okay, by putting an eyepiece here. So you can switch between the side of the eyepiece and the, and the side of the camera. Once you know what you found, okay, uh, you can just flip uh, the mirror and uh, let the light pass through towards the camera side and take a picture from the, using the camera. Now, uh, in a, uh, for example, in a Newtonian, uh, uh, the image will not be focused. So that's why you install over here uh, because of the shift. Like here, there's the eyepiece over here. The eyepiece should be in this side. It's not in this side. So why, that's why you use a uh, barrel lens just to make the, uh, the image focused. So put it over here, okay? So uh, the, uh, those are the millimeters, okay? Uh, uh, of uh, focal lengths that you can find in the market uh, range, uh, for the 1.25 uh, inch eyepieces uh, between 3.6 millimeter and 40 millimeters. They are just follows and red uh, in the zooming power order from strongest to weakest. Okay. And uh, what we see here is uh, 2.5, 3.6, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7.5, 8, 9, 10, 12, 12.5, 13, 15, 17, 18, 20, 21, 23, 24, 25, 32, and 40 millimeters. Okay, all in millimeters. Uh, why I'm uh, listing them like this? Because uh, it's a matter of manufacturing, okay? Uh, what you can find, and those are separate eyepieces. Each eyepiece has a uh, uh, like a single uh, focal length. Okay, so when you want to have, uh, you can't find uh, an eyepiece with a number of focal lengths at once, unless you are going, going to use a, a zoom eyepiece, which you're gonna use, which you're gonna see uh, in the coming slides. Okay, uh, but uh, separate uh, eyepieces, okay, uh, will have just only one single focal length. It's uh, it's obvious, like uh, so, just the length. Okay. So uh, every time you know manufacture, you manufacture as such, okay? And in the two inch eyepieces, you have 15 and 26 and 32 and 40, okay? Now, if you want uh, in the two inch more uh, stronger eyepieces, just use the barlow. If you have, if you use uh, like the, here, let's go back to the eyepieces, okay? So you take, for example, the barlow over here, you take the eyepiece, and install it over it, okay? You just insert it inside it and take them together. That was, for example, here in the uh, prism or directly into the telescope, okay? You know, as we said, you install the prism, okay? So either you look inside directly or you install the prism, okay? So when you install, uh, when you remove the, uh, when you remove the uh, prism, this means that you will have to squat, okay? <laughs> just to see beside it. So that's stand like below the telescope. But Okay, so uh, the eyepieces, this is where you put the eyepieces, okay, like we saw earlier, okay, in different uh, kinds of telescopes. And you can, as we said, install the uh, prism too, okay, so you can install the uh, eyepiece directly or 
the uh, camera directly to. Okay. Now those are type uh, type of uh, lenses called a plusel. This is their design. Uh, you have to read more about them in Wikipedia just to understand what's uh, what a plusel eyepiece is. Okay. There are different other kinds of uh, 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 eyepiece design. Okay. Uh, there is uh, Kellner and Hughes, and those are uh, old and uh, old systems. Okay, uh, they are not as good as the Plusel. Okay, and sometimes you see the Plusel with an O having two dots on the top. Okay, sometimes it's written like that. This is a new uh, cell strand uh, called Only. Okay, this is good. Uh, like. Uh, I think they're making a new, just a new shape. There's no difference. It's just a plus with With I think this is my guess. Uh, with a, a better rubber heel. Okay. Uh, what they call a better eye relief. Okay. The space between the eyepiece and the uh, uh, and your eye. Okay. This is also a barlow here. Uh, it's written on it. You can see. Okay. And look how how small is the four millimeters. Okay, this is four millimeter. Okay, look how small it is. Okay, this is not the plus one. Now, uh, see, yeah. So, uh, yeah. So we have here another kind of uh, eyepieces. Those are uh, stronger uh, with a uh, or no, have a better wide uh, wider uh, field of view. Okay. They are optimized for platinum viewing, offering like 60 uh, degrees of field of view through a uh, six element uh, fully multi coded lens system. Coding is what makes the lens not have uh, what they call internal total reflections, okay, uh, which will uh, make the uh, uh, lens blurry, okay, and not uh, have the light uh, pass through the lens uh, correctly, you know. Uh, so have uh, reflections inside the glass itself, okay. And by the way, don't never get plastic uh, <laughs> lenses or uh, even uh, the body of the eyepiece. You can never get it as uh, plastic because when you wanna uh, take pictures of the sun, uh, it might melt it down. I thought it. So here, okay. Uh, this here, the rubber here, is a pop-up. See, when you have it like here, or have it like here, just to uh, like help your eye from uh, bumping towards it. Okay, when you put your eye, you need something to uh, protect your eye. Okay. So this rubber is made for it. You do it, you just uh, turn it like a screw uh, to get it uh, uh, up, as you see compared to the C here and C here. Okay. Uh, there are different sizes of it, uh, 3.2.3, uh, 5 millimeter, 7, 9. Those are the focal lengths of the eyepieces. Those are very expensive, by the way. A single lens is for like 60, 60 dollars. Okay, so they're not, they're not cheap. Omni, uh, Omni and uh, Plusser are cheap. Okay, you can get uh, one of them for 10 dollars or 20 dollars, something like that. Okay, compared to the to this. So we have here also the TMB uh, eyepieces. Uh, those can go more uh, with a focal length, uh, like you can have something 2.5 focal length. I have one, uh, but it's not uh, really important, okay? And yeah, see the different sizes and give you a wide view of view, like 60 degrees, okay? Uh, we'll, we'll come to the uh, idea of what is up a field of view but it's just understand uh, how much you can see between your eyes okay between if you have put your hands beside your head okay both your hands is beside your head okay uh, like we're gonna see it we're gonna see it anyway okay there's a picture that demonstrates this so uh, like uh, it's how much you can see in front of your eye okay and also this uh, the almost one inch uh, eyepieces don't get them those are odd and they come with designs color and hues okay those must be abandoned okay and if you see a telescope like that just ditch it don't get it okay uh, we have also the the aspheric uh, eyepiece okay we have the aspheric eyepiece here 
uh, and it's, uh, its design is made like you're having uh, half a sphere uh, and, and you made it as a lens, half a complete sphere, you made it as a lens. So we have those uh, sizes, 10, 4, and 23. Uh, I, I'm, I put the picture like this horizontally just to show you it in all, uh, uh, in all uh, perspectives, okay? From all perspectives, okay? <coughs> and they can give you uh, a wider field of view, okay? Like the 62 degrees here. Uh, this is the zoom eyepiece. The good thing about the zoom eyepiece is that you don't have to replace eyepieces, okay? Uh, but uh, it will change the field of view. In a single eyepiece is like this or this or this, you know. Uh, it's just uh, you don't change the field of view. But with this, you change the field of view. However, you don't have to repla uh, replace the, uh, uh, the lens each time. Just once you find the thing that you saw in the a telescope just squeeze it like uh, the uh, like in the arrow the, the yellow arrow okay from uh, uh, stronger zoom to lower zoom and from uh, uh, weaker zoom to uh, bigger zoom okay magnification power uh, just by turning it like a screw okay so that's why uh, we have that's why we have the uh, uh, arrow or the little triangle over here okay here that's why we have it and uh, yeah uh, so that's why we have it okay and uh, uh, you can see with this one from Celestron it has uh, here threads for school threads uh, this means that they can install the it uh, the tearing that we saw with the DSLR, okay, uh, uh, install the camera directly in front of it, okay. Uh, now we have here the Explore Scientific eyepieces, they have uh, 82 degree field of view, those are very open uh, uh, lenses, okay, and the single lens can reach to $300, very, very expensive. I think they're mo the most expensive uh, eyepieces. I have seen them. Yeah. Okay, they like you talking, talking, talking about three hundred dollars. This is just a single eyepiece is as, uh, as as in the price of a whole uh, telescope. Okay. Now we have something called the binary viewer, which is this uh, from this perspective, and there's another perspective of it. So understand that this is how we can use uh, both eyes, not just a single eye, just the view, and this will give you like a uh, very big uh, field of view, like 100 degrees uh, or more, okay? Uh, and uh, by the way, there's this part here, set on it 1.85x. Uh, this one is a Barlow dedicated only to sit on the bun uh, viewer, okay? Uh, you know, usually use, uh, like, the uh, telescope has just uh, one place to sit with one, uh, for uh, one eyepiece, okay. That's why we call it a monocular. But if you want to do it a binocular and convert the monocular into a binocular, you have to use this binocular, okay. And this here, the Barlow, is uh, especially uh, good with uh, Newtonians because they have short back focus, okay. They won't get focused uh, easily, so that's why you put the uh, Barlow here, okay. But this is a dedicated Barlow for the binocular. And there is another one, not only 1.85, there is another one with a three times, okay? Now he is using here two uh, eyepieces of 32 millimeters, okay, plus one. Okay, those are very wide field view. So you get a very wide field view just to uh, uh, see through the telescope. Those are called eyepiece boxes just to cover or uh, keep your eyepieces safe from dust. Uh, like the big one here is two inch eyepiece here 1.5 in the middle uh, here this is the 0.965 okay <coughs> and by the way they they work uh, like a screw okay like uh, the uh, the cap here okay is 
like it has a, a tube attached to it and it has a screw okay and you turn it okay and inside the uh, little barrel from here the cylinder from outside okay and you put the uh, eyepiece inside it inside the uh, screw first okay <laughs> if you want to say now this is how we take uh, pictures uh, from a telescope using a mobile phone okay we have the system XYZ uh, as you see you install the uh, phone like this and you can use it with all of these uh, parts uh, like here this is this kind of telescope we call the spotting scope is only dedicated to not to astro astronomy just for terrestrial stuff okay although you can use it for astronomy it's just a telescope but they usually use it with uh, bird watching okay this is a binocular this is a microscope of course but uh, to us uh, we use the same method okay like the spotting scope now you you install the phone in this plate here okay uh, this here okay uh, this whole this holder you just you pull it and you, you put you insert the uh, telephone okay in the plate over here and then with this dial okay this one the black dial over here uh, you can move the uh, 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 phone okay or the phone plate itself which holds the phone uh, backwards and forward okay uh, of course you put the eyepiece inside here okay this little uh, a copper uh, colored uh, screw okay is uh, what you t uh, like you turn it in a way you'll know the weird path okay it depends it can take uh, it can sit uh, this uh, uh, mount of uh, telephone mount on a two inch uh, eyepiece or uh, 1.25 inch eyepiece. So uh, you turn this uh, copper screw uh, in a way just to make the clip from here. This is uh, where you push the clip to open it uh, just to hang the uh, mount. Okay, you turn it in a way just to push the clip on the eyepiece and bite on it okay uh, firmly okay and those dials this one and this one those are two dials one is for going uh, up uh, like uh, yeah, up and down and the other one for going left and right okay so this is the best method okay it, although it has its own drawbacks like for example i can't use it with eyepieces or four millimeter eyepieces uh, however it is still good Okay. This one is the uh, like uh, has a cheap one for ten dollars. This one is for the Celestron and XYZ like for fifty dollars. Okay. Uh, it's just fine, just fine. But the problem is that uh, sometimes it gets skewed. Okay, so the uh, uh, the uh, phone uh, is not like I say uh, it's not like uh, uh, going uh, uh, in parallel with the plane of the uh, lens okay so as it gets like inclined so uh, that's why it's hard to use okay that's why I say it's a cheap type okay this is another cheap type but it works by uh, biting on the uh, lens by turning uh, the this circle from see this edge circular edge here okay you turn it okay those teeth here this one two three teeth okay uh, you turn it uh, like according uh, with the direction of the arrow uh, just to bite on the uh, eyepiece okay This is another uh, method also, okay. I don't have this yet. The first two I do have them, okay. Uh, first three, if I said next Y, Z, and I, P, Z, and this the turning, uh, biting teeth, okay. Uh, this one's coming soon to me, okay. And uh, next here, uh, I have the worst one, which is which works by suction. 
if you don't have the back of the phone very, 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 very soft, as soft as, soft as possible, okay, this doesn't work, okay? Uh, it sucks the air, okay? And it sucks the, also, uh, like it makes a difference in the uh, air pressure, okay, by this uh, sucker lever. And this one, uh, there's here, I have a lock, which is this one over here. You just uh, turn it like a screw, then you push it like it's pushed over here to hold the eyepiece. And then you can uh, also change the screw just to make the phone go left and right uh, until you see the uh, image in, uh, inside the phone. But this is the real worst. Don't bite. <laughs> okay, I have one, but don't bite. But I, I uh, as long as it's with me, I benefited from it using uh, like uh, you can look at it as another way. Maybe your uh, laptop screen uh, from its back uh, is very soft as usual, and uh, you can put this just to hold something else on top of the laptop, uh, on the laptop screen. Okay. Now, how you take pictures using a dash camera or a digital camera like this, that's only one, okay? We have this uh, mount, okay? Now, this one, this piece, okay, is just for mobiles, but uh, you have uh, this screw and this screw, okay, like here, this is a, the other view of it, this screw and this screw, okay, which make the phone go up and down, okay? And this screw, as you see, uh, like, uh, bytes on the IPs, okay, sits firmly on the IPs to hold it, to hold the mount, the whole mount. This shelf is where you install the camera and uh, this screw uh, can put the camera firmly and can go backward and forward, okay. But uh, the backward and forward is not mechanical, you will have to do it yourself by your hand, anyway, okay. So he is using you know, a picture with a, uh, with a mobile phone and this is another one with the uh, dash cam here, see this one. Of course, you have to make a space just to allow the. Uh, as you see, the dash cam has a lens that can uh, jump from inside the uh, camera. Okay. And you can use it with a spot, uh, spotting scope or any telescope that you have. Okay. Now those are the uh, eyepiece barrel size adapters. Okay. And this is your eyepiece uh, shaft. And this is one two-inch eyepiece shaft. For example, you want to add uh, something like a 1.25 eyepiece. Okay. Uh, 1.25 inch eyepiece and uh, insert it over here. But it will fall inside. So you use the adapters just to uh, make the, your eyepiece sit firmly uh, inside the shaft. So here's an eyepiece sitting inside the shaft. Okay, and you see here is a dial just to move the shaft uh, in and out from the telescope. Okay, this one too. Okay, uh, this one as you see here, this goes as I told you from this Crayford focuser. Okay, here is 1.25 to uh, the almost inch uh, IPS. Okay, there's also uh, from one inch to uh, 1.25. Okay. There's also from 2 inch to uh, 1.25, okay? And there's also from 1.25 to 2 inch. And of course, when you have from small to big, this means the uh, field of view will be smaller. Okay, sometimes you just to get to see the whole uh, view using your 2 inch IPS, uh, you will have uh, uh, to go a little bit back, okay, step backward a little bit. Uh, also, uh, with uh, this kind, okay, in a Newtonian, uh, you must put a, a bubble lens. This is important, okay? And try to get, if you can, by now you can't, okay? I know you can't, okay? But if you, uh, if there is a chance for you to get a 1.5 Barlow, okay, 1.5 times Barlow, uh, the uh, telescope, uh, like, it will not change a lot, that's what I mean. That's why I'm telling you try to get 1.5, okay? Just to get it focused. Okay, now this is the whole uh, result altogether. Okay, this is how things should be uh, in the end. Okay, of course, I don't mean that you must use the uh, 
like this adapter but this is because this telescope is uh, the one inch adapt uh, one inch eyepiece shaft uh, so it's up to here okay the 1.0 uh, inch mount or the two inch mount here okay um, if you have a telescope with the two inch okay uh, but this is the whole idea altogether okay this is what we want to reach okay just take a picture now we have here the uh, color filters table okay uh, color filters have been showing parts of the planet more than uh, other parts. Color filters can be installed like a screw under any eyepiece. There is also a color filter ruler slider or a color filter uh, disc that uh, eases the switching between uh, the filters, if you have a number of filters, okay, without uh, uninstalling the eyepiece from the eyepiece shaft. Okay? So here's how we install the color filter. Uh, underneath the eyepiece, it's just uh, you screw it like any screw, it has screws. As you see, there are threads here also. You can also combine number of threads uh, of uh, color filters on top of each other, okay? Especially when they have uh, internal uh, threads here. Okay, as you see, there are internal threads. Okay, so you can combine number of colors like that. Okay, get the color that you want, okay? This is comes by trial and you have to test, okay? This is the color disk uh, filter, okay? The rotating disk, okay? You install the... Uh, Filters. There's a one for the two inch. There's a one for the 1.25 inch, and there's a 1.5 1.25 inch. That's and not only five uh, filters that can take uh, nine. Okay, because it's smaller, you can put more. Okay, and same uh, disk area. Okay, uh, and to to rotate it, just this is the disk C. Okay, this is the tip of the disk here. Okay, and it's just with your thumb you rotate it okay and of course uh, this is how you install it all together towards the eyepiece shaft and uh, maybe you can install your camera from here or install also uh, the eyepiece it depends on what uh, you're liking okay and of course you can uh, use this type this is lighter by the way this is lighter than weight okay and I advise using this not the disc okay uh, this is all metallic and this one uh, can take uh, th this one okay can take the two inch uh, eyepiece I'm sorry the two inch uh, yeah two inch eyepiece and the two inch uh, filters of course at the same time because if you want to see from uh, the uh, two inch uh, eyepiece too okay and those uh, rings okay you uninstall if you uninstall one you can install the uh, two inch filter if you uh, or if you want uh, to install the one, uh, 1.25 inch you can use uh, use this open hole, small hole, and then with uh, while the small uh, uh, 1.25 uh, inch uh, uh, filter is installed, you install it with the uh, hole ruler, okay? And this is the one which is from Orion, uh, which takes nine uh, pieces, okay? And it works by sliding the ruler, okay, right and left, okay. Same thing here, over here, okay, you slide left and right. And uh, of course, this is the uh, adapter for the two point, the two inch uh, eyepiece, okay. And if you want to use the camera, of course, you get the uh, two inch adapter plus the that we saw earlier, plus the. Uh, uh, the camera okay and uh, uh, with a tearing and just take the pictures okay and sometimes sometimes you will have to install a, a bar load just to get things focused okay it, you will have to test that it depends on the telescope okay so we have this uh, variable polarizing filter uh, this changes the uh, contrast in the uh, image okay but this one is what you can say uh, you have to set it once and install it once it's, uh, uh, underneath the uh, eyepiece, okay? And uh, it works like uh, uh, two plates of glass on top of each other. Both of them uh, have uh, like as if the, there is a, uh, 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 there are two nuts printed on them, okay? Uh, when you 
when you turn them over each other, move them over each other, uh, like they will uh, cross, okay, in a way that you you pass uh, the amount of the light uh, that you want, okay. And this is good for example, this is one example that I know. Uh, I know it's something terrestrial, but uh, this is how it's used uh, in terrestrial. This is the only way I know about it, uh, is that uh, you... Uh, when you uh, like take a picture of an island where it's surrounded with uh, fog, okay. Uh, if you want to remove the fog, just use this uh, uh, filter, okay. Now there are other uh, dedicated uh, filters, okay. Uh, for example, you have here the ultra high contrast, okay. And this is what we say. This is the noise, okay, which you uh, get rid of using the. Uh, such uh, UHC filters and maybe also if, because of your, when you are in the city too much uh, uh, light pollution too much light from from nowhere okay uh, if you look up in the sky uh, you see some uh, uh, too much light which you don't need uh, the, the uh, what do you call it uh, what you uh, in the like w what you always uh, try to have is or you wish to have is a very very clear sky okay so if if, uh, if the city whole city uh, shuts down uh, its lights okay the outside lights okay I'm not saying um, uh, the inside the houses and, uh, if they shut down the whole light you won't see this kind of pollution okay and you see the sky much clearer and, and see more things in this uh, in the sky okay without needing a telescope okay so yeah uh, and this is one for Mars okay this is uh, like uh, almost new like uh, at most two years okay in age okay uh, it has been produced within the last two years okay um, uh, I will go back to the UHC picture because we need it uh, this is another kind of filters which you call them not neutral density and according to the density that you have 0 0.9 or 3 or 6, uh, 0 0.6 or 1.2 this is how you use it with the moon okay uh, depending on the uh, current status of the moon okay how much it's uh, illuminated yeah but uh, with testing rates like just uh, guys just use after testing, it's better that you use the 0 0.9, okay, you, or, uh, in most of all your cases, okay, it's the best one, okay, and they all come with a, a, a 1.25 size, okay. Uh, okay, uh, there is another one here, uh, which is uh, by Fita Systems, uh, this uh, filter is used to analyze the components of the stars it has a special dedicated software with it uh, only field test systems makes it uh, that's why there's a periodic table of spectra we are displaying it uh, for every atom that's there and uh, it has its own uh, a, like uh, a spectrum a color spectrum uh, so from uh, for the color spectrums, okay, uh, you can understand uh, the components of stars, okay. This way, you know what uh, what it does contain, okay. And this one is just a wrench uh, in case the filter gets stuck. <laughs> okay, you want to remove it, or maybe uh, the uh, uh, the tearing gets stuck, okay, it's stuck. Sorry. Now this is the uh, color filter table. For example, if I wanna uh, like see lunar details, okay, in the moon, okay, if I wanna select the moon and see the lunar detail, uh, which color uh, is best to be uh, used? Uh, for example, you can use the number eight, okay. Uh, for details, more details, you can use the sixty-four, okay. Like that. So this table is by from Orion. This is a very good one. Okay, uh, find it online and uh, download it. Okay, you can find it online. And printed on uh, A3, by the way, just to get it uh, on a big size. Okay.
okay it's better to be uh, uh, printed on a3 okay if you have an observatory <laughs> hang it on the wall okay and this miscellaneous also this is part of the table okay uh, okay so for example if uh, uh, if you want to see the terrestrial viewing, use uh, number eight. Okay, at dawn. Okay. We have a of mask. Uh, this is some kind of uh, mask on the uh, 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 mouth of the telescope. Uh, like those shapes, each shape will give you this kind. Uh, of polarization uh, on the star. So instead of seeing just the star as a uh, normal ball or a normal circle, okay, you can make it look like this, okay, which is according to the mask that you install. Okay. Now, this the first type you can go to astrojargon.net and print one, okay. And you can print one according to the uh, type of your telescope and its dimensions. Okay. Uh, now, how we uh, use webcams uh, to take uh, directly uh, pictures uh, into the computer. So we have uh, here. There's a webcam over here. It was using USB. It's connected to the laptop or PC. Okay. Same here. See it's how it's connected. Okay. Uh, now we have, for example, here's the one as we want camera, one of those uh, cameras, and they have the ZWO. But the ZWO is more uh, nearer to the style of the uh, Canon, the Nikon DSLR cameras, and they can uh, take pictures of uh, uh, deep sky objects. Uh, the SV1 camera, uh, like if you're talking about the version uh, 105 or 205. Okay, uh, those don't take, uh, they're just normal webcams, okay, 105 is just 5 megapixel, the, from sv one there's the other one, 205 also, uh, just 8, 8 megapixel, but if you want something like the ZWO, uh, maybe cheap, sv one provides the one which is the, the 305, okay, but ZWO is uh, much better. Okay, you you'd better go with the W O S. Okay, and there is also the rising tech, but the W O is is like uh, CMOS. Okay, we we'll call we'll come to that. Okay, and versus a CCD camera. Okay, CMOS versus a CCD camera. We we'll come to that slide. Uh, now we use with the with those cameras a focal reducer, uh, just to. Uh, not to use the full power of the telescope, okay? Uh, and the focal reducer also uh, gives you a wider uh, field of view, okay? Uh, and uh, this uh, helps in making magnification uh, power weaker in order to get a wider field of view, like I said. Uh, they are usually like uh, uh, half time uh, times re reducing, so it take half the power of the telescope, okay? Because if you uh, use the camera directly without uh, using an IPS okay uh, installed on the uh, without using an IPS installed in the uh, telescope and this is how you use them okay this means that uh, without also using a uh, focal reducer you will be use, you will be using the full power of the telescope as if you are uh, on uh, the four millimeter IPS okay exactly like that and here is the sensor of the camera okay, inside it. Similarly, here you will have find the sensor of the camera. Okay. Now this is the uh, field of view thing. Okay. This is the, uh, how uh, we uh, ex uh, like explain the field of view. So put your hands like uh, I'm doing the pictures. Okay. Open them. Okay like uh, widening the space between them and tightening the space between them okay this is the field of view okay and look to your sides just to uh, see how much for left or right see how much you can see okay 
because your hand will be hiding uh, the things that you'll be seeing okay so this is the field view and this is what uh, we mean by the field of view okay how many uh, things that you can see between your hands is a slide by your uh, field of view okay and uh, here uh, the like there's a rising cam they sell ccd cameras whereas the uh, zwo sell uh, Z, uh, cmos cameras cmos cameras uh, well uh, the uh, like what you should uh, be uh, doing is uh, going for a ccd camera with uh, astrophotography but ccds are very expensive uh, and they are more sensitive to light okay uh, and here it says that the biggest difference is that uh, between the CMOS and the CCD uh, is that the CCD sensors or CCD the cameras that have CCD, CCD sensors okay uh, create higher quality images uh, with low noise grain the grain is like this let me see let us see I mean so let's see this is the gra uh, granulity see it okay i mean uh, you see things unnecessary compared to this the filtered lens okay with a filter unfiltered you see this so uh, the same things will happen with the uh, uh, like if you have unfiltered lens uh, and if you have the uh, ips uh, i mean the camera uh, of the ccd will not give you this amount of uh, white dots like sugar dots okay uh, you you see it mu much like this okay CMOS will give you much like the filtered lens side but uh, more than the CCD would give okay so we want to get rid of that okay because of the long exposure okay. so this is what we call uh, the noise okay so CMOS images tend to be higher in noise uh, CCD sensors are more sensitive to light. Some CMOS sensors need more light to create a low noise image at proper exposure. Okay, so uh, you give the uh, or you make the camera uh, suck as much light as it wants. Okay, so I don't uh, want too much light to come in. Okay, uh, it will make this uh, noise. Okay, so the rising cam one here. Uh, is uh, one that you find on AliExpress and uh, it's a CCD okay but they have a CMOS by the way okay okay but those are can be uh, installed with a computer okay using the USB cable and uh, this here the breathing that you see here okay those are because they can uh, cool down the, the camera okay uh, the temperature also plays a role in the uh, camera image quality okay and if you have an old uh, webcam like this one okay you can install this uh, little lens cctv cctv lens okay and install it like you see in all other pictures using this part and uh, this is the uh, this can also take a, a 1.25 inch uh, a filter okay uh, I would ask why I'm uh, sitting uh, making this sit like this this is nothing has to do with uh, taking pictures just I wanted to uh, wanted some way to uh, hold it and take a, a good picture of it just to give a good demonstration how it's how this adapter is used okay uh, or else I'll need somebody else who hold it for me okay and by the way this clip is just to put the camera on top of your uh, desktop screen okay uh, now here uh, this is a laser beam uh, please get always a, a strong uh, blue laser beam don't get a red or green or whatever only use blue okay uh, and uh, the strong ones are like for around fifty dollars between forty and fifty dollars uh, use uh, find this one especially this one it has uh, a USB inputs okay so it can recharge the battery 
anytime you want with a <laughs> telephone a charger you don't have to replace batteries this way okay uh, yeah and this is my uh, as we want web camera can be uh, installed with a telescope okay this is my whole telescope by the way uh, and this part is what we call the uh, dovetail okay also uh, this setup all of it uh, is uh, used for example here you add your guide scope and you add your laser okay just to point and aim your telescope okay and uh, this is uh, the filter that you use in front of uh, and can be installed in front of the uh, telescope at the mouth of the telescope just to take pictures of some spots uh, it's just a little film okay a very thin film paper okay a metallic paper Okay, and it's uh, very, very, very thin. Okay, uh, uh, like uh, uh, like the paper tissue. Okay, but it's thin stuff. Okay, uh, and please, very, very important. Okay, uh, don't let anybody use your telescope while you're taking uh, pictures of the sun. Don't let anybody touch it. Okay, uh, and even if you see somebody before. Uh, what before uh, taking a picture of the sun and you haven't uh, like installed the f this filter okay yet if you haven't installed this filter yet and you see him putting his eyes uh, on the IPS uh, directly uh, kick him don't hesitate okay kick him out okay uh, kick him with your uh, give him a big punch okay don't worry because he's gonna hurt himself okay do whatever just to uh, hinder him, hinder him okay from using the telescope okay and even if you have the kids around you don't let them uh, buy uh, they might you know <laughs> uh, get uh, uh, obnoxious and uh, maybe your function a uh, puncture the uh, the film it's very light okay it might hurt somebody uh, later okay because you're viewing the sun yeah so this is uh, what uh, a sunspot is, and uh, it's uh, this little spot okay, is the sunspot. Okay, uh, you can have a filter that's uh, in white color, as you see it, like this, or this one in uh, red color. Okay, and you can find things like that uh, in the market. And this one is uh, for taking shots of the sun, like you're seeing the moon okay naturally okay because this one just uh, what it does is just uh, uh, playing with the contrast and all you see just a, a normal circle a complete circle uh, like as if it's cut from a paper and uh, that's it and you won't see for example those flares and things like that those flares and the uh, sunstorms okay uh, you won't see them okay so the, you see here in this uh, picture uh, in this uh, telescope the coronado pst pst is short for uh, personal solar telescope uh, this is the uh, uh, mid are the only people who make them make them as far as i know uh, they use a uh, uh, filter uh, called hydrogen alpha filters so uh, like if you have um, uh, the light uh, waves uh, wavelengths uh, of uh, hydrogen okay the same uh, wavelength of the hydrogen uh, uh, atom okay uh, you know uh, it will filter them out and uh, this is how you see the sun normally okay in this picture the big one okay the orange one okay and me and all, as far as like I told you they are all the one the only one who make this telescope okay and there are bigger sizes than this this is the smallest size and most uh, affordable okay six hundred dollars something like that and that's all Okay, this is being beside the uh, big uh, telescope. Okay, uh, Alex made it 216 inch. And uh, thanks for watching, guys. If you subscribe and like, uh, this was uh, like a summary of what we do in uh, astrophotography. Okay, bye.